Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Wednesday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Our Lexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 38 through 44. Let us begin our divine reading with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. Jesus stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them. And demons also came out from many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him, and when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. According to St. Luke, my brothers and sisters, today's Gospel reading shows Peter's mother-in-law suffering from a severe fever. And so the disciples begged Jesus to do something for her. And so Jesus stood over her and with a word cured her. Immediately she got up and she began to serve Jesus and the group. There is a lesson here for all of us. Health and healing are not just for the individual. Her healing immediately restored her to the community and the duty of serving that community. As long as we are in good health, our energies are meant to be directed to the building of the kingdom, the building up of the community, and not simply for our own personal enjoyment. As soon as the Sabbath was over, large numbers brought to Jesus their sick. And as the scriptures tell us, he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. As Jesus had announced in the synagogue at Nazareth, the kingdom of God had arrived and was entering people's lives, bringing them health and wholeness. Many were also liberated from the power of the demons, the power of evil spirits. And these demons shouted at Jesus, You are the Son of God. Clearly the presence of the kingdom is being felt. Jesus had been working the whole night for all of these people, so at daybreak he goes off to a quiet place as he often did to sort of regroup The people who had seen what he did for them wanted him to stay with them. 
But he couldn't stay and he wouldn't stay. Jesus told him, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities as well. That is why I've been sent. And so we're told that he was now preaching in all the synagogues of Judea, all over the place. That's in the south of the country, Judea. Although the term may simply refer to the whole of the Jewish territory. No place could have a monopoly on his attention. There was only one of Jesus. He didn't bilocate. And he needed to be heard where he needed to be heard. And so we need to attach ourselves to Jesus and keep close to him and follow him wherever he goes, wherever he brings us. But we cannot cling to him in a way that prevents others from experience his healing touch as well. We can't have a monopoly on Jesus. On the contrary, our tasks as his disciples and apostles is to see that as many as possible, as many people as possible, come to know and experience his love and his compassion and his healing. Something for all of us to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. This can be either through a verse or even just a small word from this scripture passage. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and more importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus, fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete a divine reading with a closing prayer, and let us pray. Governed by your Holy Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those who contemplate and embrace your divine word, that in professing you, not just in words, but also in works, in spirit and in truth, we may merit entering the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And click on the notification button, the bell icon, so you don't miss the new meditations that come to you each and every day. And please help support our channel by sharing these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well, even those who otherwise might not be interested. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus, peace and blessings to all. Shalom, shalom.